Here come the RPMs and a lot of them. Just as they started, Nierberg, Marvin, and Lawson. With Farrell in March, Kubota's Lotus, and uh, Kologos in the Terrell. Boy, just listen to him. jump under braking uh, there at turn five to take the lead away from Charles Nierberg. Let's take and a look at this again, Mike. Here it comes, coming out of five. Oh, man. Wasn't until the last instant that Nierberg knew he was there. That's a Francois Sever Tyrrell. And the elf colors down the hill. Back to 11 in the race leader. Marvin, a 1974 Brabham BT44. Driven by Wilson Fittipaldi and John Watson back in the day. Gordon Murray's first complete Formula One design. I love that big scoop era, too. Yep. Four cars nose to tail here. Was well, certainly great for sponsor delivery. And they didn't have a sponsor. That's how the car competed in 74. Oh, Christine White a year later. It grew Martini Rossi colors. Dan Marvin was a tremendous Formula Atlantic racer back in the day, too. He looks pretty comfy right now. Yeah, he's going to hold nothing back. Nierberg in second, Lawson in third, the Williams and the Wolf. Then Farrell in fourth in the March, Kubota's Lotus, Kolivas in the Terrell. Muller in the Ensign, and then Baker's Ferrari in eighth. Lauber and King, the top ten. Charles Nierberg out of Dallas, Texas, running that 1980 Williams FW07B. Driven by Alan Jones back in the day, en route to winning the World Championship in 1980. Placed third, Brazilian Grand Prix second at the USGP. After... Uh, Farrell's really putting the pressure on Eddie Lawson. Breaking move at 11, not this time. Looks out for a little clean air. 147 miles an hour beneath the bridge. Well, that's incredible. For it's Eddie, it's a 1977 Wolf WR4 that was driven by Jody Schechter, KK Rosberg, for example. At the bridge, at start finish, these are only about 35 miles an hour faster than our Trans Am cars. Only 35. These are awesome. Oh my gosh, what wonderful machines. As stout as that is, the year they ran the first MotoGP race here in 88, I watched Wayne Rainey, who we saw there earlier, on the rear wheel only at over 150 yeah. miles an hour under that bridge. Spectacular. Chris Farrell up the hill in his march. The Rothmans colors. Powered by Ford, it must be said. Down the hill they come. Looks like one car headed for the paddock. Looks like a Surtees TS-19. Also Ford cars with power. Still a pretty good battle here at the front of the field. Yeah, this is no runaway among these five. Bradham, Williams, Wolf, March, and Lotus all represented in the front five. Kabuta, who runs in fifth, is running the 1977 Lotus, which is actually a 78. Type 78. Type 78, right. When Mario Andretti won the world championship in the Type 79 in 1978. And he's Everybody made the move. About that too. And moves up into fourth place. Kubota in the 12. 
Gunnar Nilsson actually drove that car. Two podium finishes, 77 season. And now he takes chase after Eddie Lawson in the Wolf. I think the John Player special delivery was one of the most beautiful ever. And one of the most copied. Chevrolet used it on the Cosworth Vega. Ford used it on what they called in Europe the JPS Capri. Uh, here it was the Capri S due to marketing rules. And then Pontiac in what became the Smokey and the Bandit Trans Am used that same black and gold pinstriped livery that these John Player Lotuses made famous. You see the 19th place battle here, the number three Delaney and Earl behind it. Natural 1971 002. I made a Tamiya 112th scale model kit of that, and it only took me about a year <laughs> to get all the plumbing and the wiring and all that right. Oh my gosh. And we did it up in Jackie Stewart's uh, colors. It was the same, it was a teammate to the number three car. I think they ran three and four that year. 76 March, you're looking at right here. Tommy Dreenland. Arturo Rosario drove this car. Lawson. Oh, oh boy. boy. One of the lappers, I think that was, putting two off. And pitched battle once again at the front. Nierberg is right up Marvin's tailpipe here. These two drivers have chased each other around for years. In a variety of race cars doing it in vintage Formula One machinery here today. A minute 24 is what these leaders are getting around Mazda Raceway in. Here's Lawson right here, four-time world champ. Wonder if he's just sitting back waiting a little bit, Mike, or told me earlier that the car was very, very quick. Felt very confident in it. Well, remember, Ralph, this is an exhibition. There's no prize money at the front of the field. So take that car out, give it a great run. Give it all it's got, but bring it back in one piece, please. <laughs> Marvin with a lot of straightaway prowess in that Brabham. Nierberg, Lawson, Kubota, and Farrell. You know, when Eddie got off the bikes and, and got into car racing, he had a very uh, good run in cars. Went up through the Indy Lights pathway and quite a bit of success. Great stance to that car with the big wheels out back and that huge scoop. Big gap after you get past the top four or five cars to the rest of the pack behind them. Leader dipped a wheel there too, huh? Nierberg to the inside there. Looks like he's sitting up on top of the car. It says the safety regulations uh, progressed and they kept raising the bodywork higher and higher to more encapsulate the driver uh, as they're on you see Marvin's machine and quite a difference in Charles Nierberg's. Well, that's what six years of development will do for you. Well, hang on, Charles. And a lot of development, a non-ground effects car versus a ground effects car, and maybe one of the best ever. Maybe the car of the Lotus 79 should have been the FW07. It was Patrick Head's first ground effects car, and it was, yep, it was those a big, world champ. Big tunnels on the side. Let's go a little further back in the field. And pick up another great battle. Big outbreaking move there. The Essex Livery Lotus. It was made in, in the, was that the Arrows? Yeah, yeah. Maiden in the Arrows. Uh, taking the spot, that's for 16th from Delaney in the 002 Terrell. Ron Maiden. Forsteiner. Raise a glass. And the 28. That's Mockett in the Penske PC4. Doug Mockett's had this car for quite a while. And, uh, Seen him several times in it. It's the last F1 car the, the Penske guys built. Right. 
took the win in Austria in 76 with John Watson. Oh man, did you see that slide? That's brave right there. You're gonna throw that car through the corkscrew sideways, blind entry to that corner. That's giving it all it's got. Should be getting near the end of this race, I would think. Well, the last time's allowing these guys to put in a few more than average. All but inches apart there. We're about eight, eight to nine minutes out at this point. 28 minute race. So we've got a few more laps to go. Locke running uh, 77 Lotus, 1976 77 model, X Mar Andretti car. This car actually was featured in the movie Rush. Mario drove the car the 76 season, his first year driving for Team Lotus. Used it in qualifying Austrian and German GPs where he came home fifth and 12th respectively. For the movie Rush, all of the owners, or many of the owners of the cars of this era were invited to participate, and they all agreed on one condition, that they could do their own driving in their own cars, and for the most part, they did. Uh, no stunt drivers were employed. Uh, the actors, uh, Chris Hemsworth and I think Daniel Bruhl were put in the car for, you know, the close-up shots right. and the hero sequences, but otherwise these fellows went out and really gave these cars a, a strong ride and great footage for the movie. A little different than the making of uh, Grand Prix back in the day, right? Yeah. 50 years it's been since Grand Prix debuted. 50 years. Still remember, a great movie. Remember seeing that for the first time in Cinerama. Cinerama, exactly. And said, boy, do I want to be a part of this. Andrew Beaumont running this Lotus, 1980 year, Model 81, a Mario Andretti car in the Essex livery, driven during the 80 season. What was Essex? Essex Pet Petroleum. Petroleum. Yeah, okay. So that was about the time that they were starting to wipe all the cigarette advertising off the race cars, wasn't it? Oh, everybody got cranky about that. I'm not <laughs> sure why, but you're absolutely well. right. And then there's no advertising as on our leader. But that only lasted a year. Yep. Eddie Lawson, by the way, has fallen back a little bit and lost touch with the battle for the lead here. Still third. There he is. Something many people dreamed about here at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca, seeing a real F1 points race here. There's a lot of talk about it over the years, and just, yeah, just never difficult came to, to make it happen. Yeah. And mainly for commercial considerations, because the Formula One operations, as they are controlled by Bernie Ecclestone, almost all the commercial considerations, such as signage, TV rights, and everything, are controlled by Formula One. Basically, all that's left for the local promoter are the ticket sales, and that that would be a tough sell to try to make a profit at that. Essex Lotus to the inside, making the pass on the arrows. And back. Ron Maiden runs that arrows. It's a 1978. Model is an FA1. Carter Patrese drove that car. The thing about this, Ralph, is the people who own and drive these cars now know that there's little commercial value to our names. The cars are the stars. Yes. And the best that we can do, as, as I like to say, as stewards of history, is give the car a great ride, give it a great result as possible, let people see, enjoy, and experience it as it was back in the day. But with no pretense that any of us are Dan Gurney or Parnelli Jones or any of the other of our heroes, no matter what it may say on our helmet, uh, we're here to show these cars off and put on a great exhibition. About five minutes of this left to go.
31 car is Collie Bus. Right there. The next iteration of the Tyrrell from the 003 Crosswell Severe car. Battle for eighth place. Double O seven. The model on that Tyrrell. Double O seven three. Built in the seventy four season. Back up front. Charles Deerberg continues to give chase, but the gap widening just a little bit. You know, it's interesting too, when you talk to some of the guys that compete in this category about pieces and parts for these cars, of course, it, you know, there's not a whole lot of pieces for them left, but it is a um, unique fraternity, if you will. So they all share information about where they can get things and who has what and help each other source the pieces and parts if something gets broken. And generally, if you're going to make a rare set of wheels, if you're going to mold up uh, for, for a set of wheels for one of these cars, you're going to make four or five sets because people, as time goes on, are going to need them. It's so, a battle for ninth here, Mike. March, it's a March 7, 61, very much in the style restored brilliantly right down to the helmet of the 1975 Austrian Grand Prix winner of Vittorio Brambilla, who had a, an unusual nickname. The Baby Bull. Was it not? No? La Monza Bria, the Monza Gorilla. Oh, oh. Well. <laughs> the Utensil Beta, March 7, 51. This is a 761, chased by a hill. GH1. You know who the team manager for that car for the Graham Hill Racing Team was? Believe it or not, was Alan Decatene. Really? Yes, sir. Our good friend Alan. Our dear so friend Alan. Over at Pebble Beach today. Is he not? Yes. I would sincerely hope so. And the Benetton behind it. Tyrrell back to Benetton. Or the Benetton, Benetton yeah. back to Tyrrell. Flying colors, you remember that? Yep. That was their slogan in those days. Whoa. It's quite all right. Oop. Terrell gets a little squirrely, too. It's amazing the pains that these people who own these cars and race them go to to make sure they're authentic and genuine looking, right down to the helmets. A little battle getting heated here. Yep. King left quite a bit of room there. Setting up for turn five. Beautiful looking car in the embassy livery. Built by Lola. You see the shear lines of the 332 Formula 5000 car and it's only somewhat more delicate in Formula 1 trim. Final lap here of our 19 group. 7B, 67 to 84 Formula One cars. Always a big highlight of the weekend and sadly the last race on the calendar about the time most of the fans have been sunburned and headed for the exits. Uh, but those who have stayed are rewarded by seeing the fastest cars ever to race at Monster Raceway Laguna Seca. Checkered flag, only thing left to do here is Dan Marvin and Charles Nierberg charge down the hill one more time. A very stylish way to end a yep. glorious weekend. I think Marvin put two off right uh, here exiting 10 early on in the race, but otherwise pretty flawless drive for both of these competitors. Car's still clean. Oh, looks like Charles closed up, didn't he? Sure oh, did. and he got a little loose coming off the final corner. And, and it looks here's like your winner. Marvin's going to hold him off for the win. 
Dan Marvin, Charles Nierberg, the Brabham in the Williams, then Eddie Lawson in the Wolf. Farrell on the last lap in the March took fourth from Kubota in the Lotus. Again, no trophies, no prize money, but one driver in every one of our 15 races will receive a Rolex Cup for his performance based subjectively by a panel of judges. And in selected morning races, there'll be a Bottoms Cup awarded as well, along with some very special awards for cars in certain categories or and, and the grand prize. Yeah, King and Lauber making their way to the line. Lauber is going to beat him there. Great celebration there. Or Thornton, I should say. Thornton and King. Thornton in the 23 takes ninth. That'll round out the top 10. The one driver who is chosen to be emblematic of the Rolex Monterey Motorsports reunion receives a Rolex watch in the prize giving about 30 minutes from now and the original of the Bill Patterson artwork of the program cover featuring the 100th anniversary of BMW. What a wonderful weekend yeah. celebrating great cars and now sadly I have to take out my AARP car and be be my real age again. But what a great weekend it's been uh, celebrating some great golden eras of motorsport.